Growing up, I was blessed to have three grandparents in my life, my mom's mother and father and my dad's mother. However, my world seemed to shatter when within a five-year time span, I lost two of the most important people in my life, leaving me with only one grandparent. Though I was young, I felt the pain of losing both family members. Looking back, I realized how long it took me to understand that the death of one of these members would drastically change my life for the better. My dad's mother, who was referred to as Mimi, would be this member. Though I had attended church all my life, I had also just begun high school. The amount of peer pressure influenced upon me was a heavy weight. Already in my first semester, I was heading for the wrong path. However, just before the second semester of high school began, I suddenly found myself involved with the youth group at my church. I had attended a few times when in middle school, but felt like an outcast because the majority of the group was much older than me, causing me to be ignored. As a high schooler, even though I was only a freshman, I was one of the oldest teenagers there. Though I had felt my grandmother urge me to become a part of this, I felt as if there was something more I was supposed to do. I had a purpose with this group, and she was going to help me find it. Before I knew it, I was making friends and even contemplating the idea of becoming a youth leader, and I did. Though there were six members considered a part of this group, it did not last long. Even though this failed, I managed to take matters into my own hands. I was constantly planning events outside of youth, creating ideas to help better the community, and attending church and youth regularly. This was a big step for me. Just a few months earlier, I was only attending church once a week. At this point, I was attending twice and sometimes three times a week. After graduating from high school, I remained a core member of the group. As the summer flew by, I began to wonder what I would do at college to feed my religious spirit. In relation to a UCLA survey on college students, I felt as if I were part of the 80% interested in religion and the 79% showing belief in God, but I desired to be part of the 81% that attend religious events. At orientation, I received many flyers for different religious groups on campus. I was determined to attend Georgia Christian Student Center, but only because my roommate planned to do the same. I attempted to attend many events, but I never seemed to follow through. I had heard about another organization, Wesley, which is the Methodist organization on campus. Wesley is dedicated to bringing all students to Christ through worship and message. I tried to go a couple of times. I longed to worship and feed my spirit. I refused to go alone, refused to look weak, and refused to look lost. According to USA Today, college is where you make or break your relationship with God. I felt as if mine were breaking. I did not feel my relationship was breaking because I felt the Christian ministries on campus were hypocritical and judgmental. However, one in four young adults tend to believe this to be true, according to a recent survey published in USA Today. I felt this way because I was allowing what others thought about me to keep me from growing in my relationship with God. I refused to be part of the group of students who were swept away by the freedoms offered by college. I needed that relationship, especially after moving away from home. The struggles of making new friends, keeping my grades up, and having fun are hard to balance alone. I didn't need nor want to live my life halfway through him. A couple of weeks of, after trying to go to Freshly, a campus ministry dedicated to college freshmen, a friend asked if I would join him. I was ecstatic. We went together, sat together, and worshipped together. This was my first time worshipping since I had moved to Athens. The feelings that overcame me were indescribable. Immediately after attending my first service, I knew I was meant to be here. However, after service was finished, we were asked to divide into small groups. My friend and I were not in the same group. Even though all I wanted to do was leave, I felt my Mimi tell me everything was all right. I looked for my small group, which are provided to help students become closer to the Lord. That night, I began an incredible journey. In the first set of small groups, the group I was assigned to was quite large, about 15 girls other than the leader. As we introduced ourselves and talked, I felt alone in a big group. Most people were comfortable sharing their stories, but I wasn't. I felt like my stories didn't relate or didn't mean anything. However, as the weeks progressed, I found the group dwindling, making me feel a little more comfortable. In our third week of meeting, there were only five or six girls. I found myself being much more open than before, but my guard was still somewhat up. As the weeks progressed, I found myself connecting with most of the girls on an individual level. In fact, one of the girls has even become one of my closest friends on campus, 
nights. We have dinner together every Monday night, a girls' night on Thursday evenings, and usually something fun on the weekend. We even plan to be roommates next year. As for my leaders, they have been so open with the group. Because of this, I find myself comfortable to share more and more each week. I know that what is said in our circle stays there, but the comfort shown by the group continues each day. The death of my Mimi was a tragedy that turned into a blessing in the end. Though not physically on earth, I feel her with me as I make my spiritual journey. Though I originally fought the idea to attend youth, I am so thankful that I did. Not only did I grow spiritually, but it led me to yearn to stay involved in ministry when moving to college. I am now part of a group I can depend on for anything. This is why when asked who has influenced me most, I answer with a gleeful response, I mean me.